Shalom Aleichem, everybody. Hope all is well. We have an ability to increase, to improve our prayer. When uh, praying to Hashem, how do we improve our prayer? Well, first of all, the main thing to note is that God hears our prayers and we have the power to affect the world at large with our prayer. And this is something that, you know, words can express the true power of this, this reality. But to kind of get a little idea of how powerful our prayers are, imagine an emergency situation. Imagine, God forbid, when something like awful, uh, something you went through that was an awful situation. Imagine if someone told you you could go back in the past and change that and, and cause it to have never happened. Well, that's what we can do with our prayer. With prayer, we can save ourselves from these awful experiences from occurring. We can cause God to have mercy upon us and to improve the situation. Meaning, well, looking back at the past, everything was for the good. But from the future perspective, we have the ability to sweeten God's judgment. We have the ability to cause God to make the situation we find ourselves in much sweeter. So that's the main thing, like understanding that our prayers are listed. God hears our prayers and we have the power to not only change our own lives, but to change all of those lives around us as well with our prayer. Prayer is the strongest weapon. So that's the main thing. The second thing to note is prayer is a great time to reconnect back with the source. Normally throughout the day, even when we're serving God, there are so many external distractions that cause us to lose sense of touch of God's presence. But when we pray, we are able to then shed all of those distractions and reconnect back to the source. And that is why it's incredible to, you know, in Chabad, that we have the custom in Chabad. Other groups may, other like sects as well may have that custom as well. Look, we're all Jewish, but I'm saying the beautiful custom, we all, we all pray to Hashem, but some people have different customs they learn before prayer. Our custom and, and at the synagogue I go to, and I'm sh all Chabad uh, synagogues as well, is to learn some Chassidut, Chassidus, before praying. Because Chassidus is basically, it's Kabbalistic style teachings. It's teach the teachings of the Rebbeim, of the Hasidic, Hasidic Rebbeim. It's their deep teachings, basically, on Kabbalistic teachings that are brought down to into Hasidus. So when you're learning about Kabbalistic teachings, you're talking about very spiritual ideas. So it's very exciting stuff. Like in Judaism, we have many different... Um, aspects which we can learn we can learn about the laws we can learn about the stories we could learn about them the dis the discussions we could learn about the you know many different things that you know all the law like all the details of the laws all the the holidays we could learn about a lot of things but when we learn Hasidus we're learning about God we're learning about the higher levels of reality so we get ourselves in a very spiritual state of mind you know, uh, for me, and, and, when you, and these are good things, good to learn Hasidus, good to learn these deep teachings before praying because, and in general, throughout the day, because it, it, it gives you a sense of godly reality, and these are nice ideas to meditate on. I always try to find a few nice ideas that I learned about in the morning, and I think about those ideas when praying, and they allow me to have more focus because... You know, we don't want to feel like we're just mumbling words when we're praying. We want to feel like we're talking to the creator of the world. We want to feel it. We want to feel excited. We don't, we don't just want to feel like we're talking like robots. We want to feel God. So how do we do that? We do that by studying Torah before, studying Hasidus before. Specifically, studying Hasidus. The Kabbalistic teachings of Hasidus. And these arouse a person to feel excited to pray to God. Rather than feel like they're just forced to, to say words, they feel like they're they're face to face with the with the Lord of Hosts, with the the Almighty, and that's what we want. We want to feel the Almighty's presence when we're praying to Him, and that is why, you know, also connects to you know we want, I I you know we we and we speak about these ideas throughout the blessings of the Shema. We speak about how how all all the higher level angels praise Hashem. And how when we're praying to God, we try to resemble angels. Because what, what do angels do? They praise Hashem. Angels are obsessed with God. All they do is just praise God all day long. 
they're in the higher levels of reality and they're obsessed with God. They, they want to compliment God. They want to, they're obsessed with God. They have no self-ego. They have no self-desire. They're only, they're only interested in God. Some people say, what's an angel? Some people think angels like with wings flying around. Well, angels are it's not exactly that. Well, this idea of angels flying, it's not a, it's not a physical flying. It's a spiritual lot, going from a going from a one level to a higher level. They're they're they are they are they are they're they're they're, they're, they're they're elevating to a higher level of reality, and uh, basically angels are um, conscious beings that are above that are in higher levels of reality that are servants of God. They are basically con beings that God created that are conscious of God. God created these consciousnesses, so the spiritual consciousnesses that are aware of God's presence. And also God sends angels to carry out missions throughout the world. It's not exact, it's hard to exactly captivate this in a sentence, but it's not really like a physical angel just flying around in the world. Meaning the God causes an angel to make, like when there's rain, God makes the rain come down through an angel like through the agent it's just the means in which god angels are the means in which god creates the world with their agents spiritual conscious realities that cause the world to conduct itself in a certain way and this is basically like the way in which god um um way in which god creates the world for example they have the example how does a piece of grass grow there's a piece the grass grows because there's a spiritual agent within the grass that that tells the grass to grow, meaning that tell that causes the grass to grow. And this is something that we know this is a reality because we know that the grass is alive. So what is with alive within the grass? It's this spiritual agent, angel of the grass, so to speak. That's called the mazal, mazal of the grass. It's not exactly translates as an angel, but it's the mazal of the grass, so to speak, that causes the grass to grow. What causes a tree to grow? There's a spiritual DNA encoding within the tree that causes the tree to grow in a certain way, that gives life to the tree. And so, but we know there's really nothing other than Hashem. Hashem is the only true existence. But Hashem causes the world to exist in this way where there seems like there's other realities for us to have free will. But in the end, God is the only true existence. We're just a part of Him, which we're very lucky. And that's actually what prayer is getting us to do. We're taking our own existence and we're, 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 sub we're submitting it to God. We're submitting our own existence to God. We're recognizing His reign over us. And we're doing it in a way of joy, in a way of love, in a way of fear, in a way of awe. And we are affecting the world at large with that reality. Another idea I just want to quickly touch upon is that when we're praying, we have to sort of let go of our controlling of our thoughts in the sense where when we're thinking about a deep idea, I personally, I love to think about the different spherot when praying, to meditate, to think about the different levels of spheroids. Of course, we're only praying to God. We have to focus our intentions that we're praying to the Almighty, but it's good to think about Kabbalistic deep ideas before prayer to get us into a spiritual state of mind. So I like to think about the different spheroids and the levels, the different worlds, and think about the differences between them and to go through the different levels in my mind. And there's all the spheras, like the ten spherot, exist within the spherot. So there's ten spherot within th this sphera, has all the ten within it, and then ten within it, and it goes deeper and deeper. And you can keep going deeper within the spherot. So when you think about those ideas, they're very exciting, but they, you know, of course, a person, this is something that you have to learn a bit about this idea to be able to meditate about it, so you know the different spherot and how they interact with each other, and how, well, how God causes them to interact with each other, and how the worlds come into existence through these spheras. So these are nice ideas to think about during prayer. I love to do that personally. But if whatever works with you, if you like to think, you could think about Abraham, Isaac, the stories of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the stories of Chumash. You could just, you could just think about your own meditation on heaven and higher levels of reality and Gan Eden. All these things are beautiful things. And everything is real. Your experience, your prayer to God is real. However it manifests itself, it is real. And it's important not to shut your own thoughts down. Sometimes we're always like, Judging our own thoughts. Ah, oh, this isn't a real spiritual thought. That isn't a real spiritual thought. The Yetzir Hara, the evil inclination, the biggest technique he uses against us is he tries to make us think we're not serving God while we're serving God. So let's say we're doing a mitzvah. Let's say we're doing a mitzvah. We're serving God. We're praying. He say, oh, you should be praying like this guy. Oh, look at how he's praying. You should pray like him. 
rather than just say, well, no, the way I'm praying now is good, it's real, God appreciates it. No, the Yetzirah wants us to always think we have to pray a different way. So we have to just trust that our prayer is working as well. That's very important to trust that the way we're praying is making God happy. God appreciates it. And he desires our prayer and he is going to answer our prayer. And the way we're praying now is, is good and we have to let our mind go up. Rather than always go down in thought and try to break up our thoughts, we have to meditate and let our thoughts go up and accept our thoughts. <coughs> Sorry about that. So let us all have success in this journey to pray, to, to give praises to the Lord, to Hashem, to give him the joy he deserves. Because he surely gives us what we deserve and more than we deserve. So let today be the day where God reveals himself to the entire world and all, all creations, young and old, all flesh will recognize God's reign and authority and, and omnipresence over on all of us, within all of us, over all of us. May Hashem bless you. May today be the day. Be well.